morning. Welcome back to the Mayor's Table. My guest again this morning is Rob Mays, City Manager. And Rob, good to have you back. It's always good to be here, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Rob, it's, uh, we're about halfway through fiscal year 18. Yeah. And I thought it'd be a good time for us to deliver some financial news to our viewers, uh, give a mid-year financial update. And I want to talk uh, kind of broadly uh, initially about uh, what's happening with our GRT revenue in the general fund, um, how it compares to our budget and how it compares to actual numbers for the same time period a year ago. Yeah. And then talk in general about our expenses as well and so that we can give a general feel to our viewers about how we're doing this fiscal year. So why don't we just start, start uh, out with uh, um, the revenue side of the equation. Uh, for this first six months, how are we doing with revenue? Well, we're doing very well. You know, it's hard to believe we're, all, well, from a revenue calculation standpoint, we're halfway through the year. We have our six-month numbers. just seems like yesterday we were adopting the FY18 budget back in, um, in May and early June and had a lot of discussion, always centers on how do we project revenue. And there's always the whole gamut of very skeptical to very optimistic and we always uh, try to find that middle middle ground, and you know we've done pretty well over the last uh, 10 to 12 years of predicting pretty close to how things have actually um, turned out. Um, we always have to put the disclaimer that, that everybody seems to, to put in that we're cautiously optimistic, at least on the the near term. When we were talking about revenue projections uh, during the budget process, we actually projected revenue of about about 51 million but we only budgeted 50 so once again we budgeted more conservative than we actually projected but in reality as we if we take the current trend and project it to the end of the year we're probably looking at about 53.7 million dollars so that's actually uh, almost to, forward to our 2020 projection so mm -hmm. 18 will project even our 2019 as we predicted, a, a reasonable path of improvement um, over the next few years. So uh, specifically, what does that mean on GRT, which is our gross receipts tax, which is our main so source of tax revenue? Uh, we are 11.5% uh, above a year ago. So just comparing where we sit today to a year ago, a pretty substantial double-digit um, improvement from a year ago. On a budget basis, uh, that, that equates to 6.5%. So revenues are actually exceeding our budget by about 6.5%, and they're actually uh, uh, also exceeding even our most optimistic projections by a couple percent as well. My recollection is that uh, we budget for about a 5% growth in our revenues when compared to fiscal year 2017, so. Four and a half to be exact. Right, yeah, so pretty close. <laughs> yep. And uh, so we're, we're doing seven and a half percent better than budget and about 11 and a half percent to 12% uh, when we compare actual numbers for the same time period, which is the first six months of this fiscal year. Yep. So um, let's talk a little bit about the expense side of that equation. Yeah, well, you know, when it comes to expenses, we've we've we work very hard to live within our means, and I think I, th I think every year, including since 2009, which was our har our high mark, our expenditures have actually always been under our actual revenues, in spite of those very uh, dramatic uh, volatile years. But this year, uh, specifically through through November, five months into the year, uh, our our revenues exceed our actual expenditures by $1.3 million. Mm -hmm. So um, that's uh, something we're very proud of. And it's, but again, it's indicative and it's consistent of uh, our management processes and the city council's uh, direction over the last, uh, well, many, many years, but I can only speak to the last 12. Mm -hmm. So we're overperforming on both the revenue side and the expense side. Uh, yeah, both. Mm -hmm. Both are uh, considered favorable to yes. use the the yeah. accounting term. Yeah, and I would, and I would characterize that as overperforming. <laughs> yes, I'm I, very I'm very pleased with both yeah. sides of that equation. That's exactly right. Now, you referred to our high water mark in terms of gross receipts tax revenue to the general fund being in 2009. That's correct. And so in that in that year, uh, 
beginning in that year and then uh, the, the ensuing 12 months, we saw a decline of about 22 percent in That's our right. gross receipts tax revenue to the general fund, a huge drop that had significant impacts on the uh, uh, the fin financial uh, aspects of our city operation. Mm -hmm. I was about to say that it had dramatic impacts on the delivery of services and programs, but it really didn't because of the way in which it was managed. We actually were able to continue to provide services and programs that had historically been provided, but we just did that with fewer people. That's right. That was the main, the main uh, change we did was we, uh, we reduced our workforce. So, Rob, where are we now if we're looking at today and we're comparing it to that high water mark? How far have we gotten back toward that high water mark? Like I said, we fell about 20. It's been up and down ever since then. Um, if our projections hold and we are at uh, 54.5 million at the end of this year, to put that in perspective, that high water mark was a little over 55 million. So we'd still be, you know, about a million dollars below where we were in 2009. But that's starting to, to get back up there within a few percent. I think we have to be cautious about these numbers because uh, we know that um, we're seeing a bit of a spike, a bit of a bump now that we all appreciate seeing. But I think that we really don't have any strong signals that this is going to be sustained. In fact, we can think of reasons why we might slide again in the next two or three years. And we'll talk a little bit about those things here in a minute. Uh, but before we do that, I wanna talk about another metric that I think is important, and that is our cash reserve number in our general fund. Let's tell the viewers about how that is trended and where we are now in our cash reserves. Well, um, interesting, the prior to the financial crisis of 2009, we had less than 10% of our budget in cash reserves. And so throughout the worst of the worst times financially, we were able to build our general fund cash reserves back up to an excess of 20%. Uh, they're probably back down about 16 or so. But on these projections right now, we'll be back up into that, uh, into close to that 20% range. And so it's a healthy cash reserve. It's, a, it's very it's healthy now and, and will be even healthier at the end of this year. I think year. many organizations, uh, local, government organizations would be very envious of that kind of a cash reserve and and I uh, commend you and your staff for managing our resources in a way that has allowed us to maintain services and programs to a great degree but also to continue to to keep that cash reserve number stable and even escalating at times yeah so I think that's commendable let's talk a little bit about what we think might be driving this bump in gross receipts tax revenue that we're experiencing now uh, I have my my theories about that, but uh, I think we can talk a little bit about the sectors of the economy that contribute, and we can talk about trends there as well. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, let's start with the oil and gas sector. The oil and gas sector is uh, is clearly doing uh, extremely well, particularly when you look at it on a percentage basis. I mean, the numbers are relatively small, and everything is relative. But uh, oil and gas has gotten so low that a relatively small increase in dollars of tax is a very high percent. But but the percentages are good for comparison's sake. Uh, oil and gas, which we call mining oil and gas, is uh, up 171 percent from the prior year. So that equates to you know, about a million dollars of increased revenue flowing just from the oil and gas sector alone. So that's a big component of it. Mm -hmm. Then we got construction that's doing well. Construction's up 25% from a year ago. Mm -hmm. Some of the others, wholesale trade, 20%. Um, what we call other, it's kind of a miscellaneous sector, is up 42%. So a lot of, lot of good things happening in our community. I think that, that um, we've noted this before, that we've talked a lot about e economic diversification. I think the fact is that the data shows that in spite of the fact that obviously mining, oil, and gas is a huge base economy for us, our data has shown over the last decade that the fact is that our economy has grown more diverse than it ever has been before, and that a smaller percentage of our overall revenue is, has, is, is that percentage has gone down of what comes from oil and gas. But again, that's not to minimize the importance of that because there's a trickle down effect there and it's very, very important to us. We also have to recognize and point out that our retail sector contributes uh, very heavily to our gross receipts tax base. Uh, by volume, it is by far the most significant in, in total dollars. Uh, but we also have to recognize that 
the health of that sector of our economy is very, very much directly related to jobs. And it's the oil and gas and mining sector that creates a lot of the jobs that uh, we have in our community. And that's why we uh, aggressively seek to protect those jobs. So I know that uh, out at Arizona Public Service, the Four Corners Generating Station, that uh, they're in the process of retrofitting their two remaining units out there and uh, they've taken down one unit to retrofit it and um, and it's going to be back up uh, and operating here soon and then they'll take the other unit down and undergo the same kind of process that they did with the first but during this last four months while this first unit has been down uh, they've had 2,000 to 2,500 employees out on that site and uh, many many of those people and maybe a significant majority of them don't live in the four corners area they're coming from far away places uh, to to undertake the work on that project and they are creating an economic buzz in our community they're here earning some very significant wages by the way and they're spending their money in our communities in farmington being the primary retail hub of the area, a lot of that money is coming in to the city of Farmington in the form of gross receipts taxes on goods and services that are purchased. So we can expect that probably to last another four months. I think the next unit goes down and they begin that work on that unit uh, January um, 19th or just right around the corner. And that'll be another four to five month project. But once that ends, then we are going to lose those temporary jobs. We also know that we are challenged with what is going to be happening out at San Juan Generating Station with that plant uh, planned to be shuttered uh, and uh, cease to operate in January of 2022. It's uh, several years, you know, four years, five years down the road, but nevertheless, uh, they'll be uh, tapering down the jobs uh, to a point uh, where they can close the facility by January of 2022. And uh, so we'll, we'll bear the consequences of those um, jobs that are, are um, uh, being eliminated over time due, due to attrition. So we still have challenges, but we can certainly say that we're enjoying the good times right now it's just a matter of how long those times will remain good. And of course, we do hope that we are doing things with our economic development activities that help us to broaden our tax base. So uh, I th think that probably covers it uh, for this morning. And um, I appreciate your, um, your uh, guidance here as we deal with our financial issues. And I appreciate the way in, in which you and your staff manage our resources. Anything else you'd like to add before we close? Well, just I was asked by a reporter what we're going to do with this windfall. And that was, well, wasn't the exact words, but it was quick to point out they, these times are better. But again, they're, they're not good times necessarily. They're relative to they're not as good as they used to be still. And we're going to stay the course. We have no plans to increase our expenditure budgets, no plans to increase our capital budget. Any, any excess revenues that uh, we have this year will go into the savings account. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate the update. Uh, thank you for joining us here once again on the Mayor's Table, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week.